Good evening. We want to welcome each one here this evening for our Thanksgiving worship service, and it's good that we can come together as God's people to give thanks for all his goodness to us. Um, just a, a couple of announcements. Um, you notice the new grand piano that Carla is sitting by. Um, it's been donated in honor of Joanne Pulstra. So um, hopefully for many years it is a blessing to this congregation. I can almost anticipate Mandy playing it. So um, uh, It's good that we can come together as God's people and worship and celebrate. And also um, Sharon Spikestra was not able to have her procedure um, this week, but she's able to be with, her, be with us this evening um, and plans to have it on December 8th. So we pray that that goes well and she'll have to be there for about five days in Sioux Falls. So keep her in our prayers. For our call to worship this evening, we turn in our bulletins and it comes to us from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who has made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And we begin our worship this evening by turning to number 797. Come, ye thankful people, come. And our God greets us this evening in these words, Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, His only Son, through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our God, having greeted us, let's take a moment to greet one another.
We'll continue staying standing and we'll sing together uh, the next few songs. We'll begin by number 213, followed by 214 um, in our hymn books. We bring the sacrifice of praise, first of all. And then number 193, God is so good.
And then 513, thank you, Lord. You may be seated, and we continue to turn in our hymn books to page 798, where there's a responsive reading entitled, Honor and Thanksgiving. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. Give thanks to the God of heaven. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known the deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders, glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. His wonders. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and they worshipped God, saying, Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And now we have um, opportunity to give of our offerings, and while we do so, we'll sing number 188, Praise Him, Praise Him, All Ye Little Children. Cross the page to 191 and we'll stand and sing, Father, I adore you.
Our Father in heaven, we come unto you this evening and we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done for us, for who you are, and who you allow us to be. You allow us to be your children, heirs of yours, heirs of eternal life. And we thank you this evening that we have opportunity to give back a portion of what you've blessed us with, and we pray that you will multiply it, that you will use it to bless people in your name, that people might be drawn to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we ask the children to come forward for our children's message. It's good to see you all here this evening. Um, are any of you looking forward to having a Thanksgiving meal tomorrow? You are. you are. What do you think you'll be on the table to eat for Thanksgiving? Turkey. Turkey? Anything else? Stuffing? Mashed potatoes? Mashed potatoes. Cranberries. Cranberries, green beans. Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Yeah, with whipped cream. Yeah. Um, there will be lots of food, won't there? But let's just say you came to have your Thanksgiving dinner and on your plate was just five little pieces of corn. What would you think? Think, boy, where's the rest of it? Yeah. But years ago, um, they used to do that on the East Coast. The Pilgrims, when they came to the United States, they went through some really hard times and there was very little to eat. And they were rationed out just five kernels of corn to eat for each person a day so they could survive until there was more food. And then later when they had Thanksgiving, they would put just five kernels of corn on their plate, reminding them of how God had been with them in that time. And they were so thankful that God had been with them when they had very little and kept them alive. And so sometimes when we have seem to have very little, it's then we can remember that God is with us the most. And so I brought for you tonight five kernels of candy corn, which are significantly larger than the other corn. You are welcome. You're welcome. You are welcome. You're welcome. And so tomorrow when you have your Thanksgiving dinner, I'd like you to put them on your plate and just think. You know, I've been blessed with so much more than this. And God has been so good to me. And we remember that God gives us what we need each and every day. And Oakley, if you would pass this around, I'd like everybody to take a bag. And you can all take five kernels of corn if you want to pass them around. Um, and you can go back to your seats and uh, just pass it and they can pass it themselves. And for our scripture this evening, we will turn to the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 12. And we'll read verses 41 through 44. Mark chapter 12, beginning at verse 41. Yeah. 
Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Then we turn also to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 6, and we'll read verses 38 through 42. Luke chapter 6, beginning at verse 38. Jesus says, Give, and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also told them this parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. This is the word of the Lord, and may God add his blessing to it. There's the saying, less is more. And when we think about things sometimes in our houses, we can have so much stuff that when you want to find something you know you have. It can be hard to find it. Even our clothes, um, we can know we have a certain shirt and we may have to go through our whole dresser, go through all the laundry to find it because we're not sure where it's at because we have so much. Some of us have shops like that too, farmers, where we put things and you know you have it. But the matter is, where is it? Um, because it's there somewhere. And if we had less, it would be easier to find. The same is true for our freezers. We think of our freezers full of food, and we know we have something in there that for just the right time. And now the time has come, where is it? It's down in there somewhere, and we may have to empty the whole freezer to find it. And if we had less in there, it would be much easier to find. But it goes beyond that. We think about this past year. And you know, we got by with very little rain. Had we had much rain, we would have think, boy, we got a wonderful crop with, that matched the amount of rain. But this past year, we had little rain. And we still got a good crop. And it reminds me of back in the book of Judges, where God calls Gideon to go fight the Midianites. And he calls the people to gather, and 32,000 soldiers come to fight. And God says, you have too many. So he tells them, um, tell those who are afraid to go home. And over half of them go home. And he's left with about 10,000 men. And then God says, you still have too many. And he takes them to the river to drink, and the ones who drank one way were the ones he chose. And it wasn't the most of them. It was only 300. And God says, now, now you can fight the Midianites. Because 
it's obvious. It's obvious that it isn't you doing it, but I will get the glory. And so when we get by with little, we realize it's a blessing from God. And there's times when, I remember especially when we were first married, funds were low and you wonder, how am I going to pay this bill or that bill? And God always comes through. And we remember what we have as a gift from Him. And we're more thankful, often are we not, when we have less. And it seems ironic, why would we be less thankful when we have more? And as we look at this passage in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is sitting in the temple watching the, you would say, the collection plate. Say, why would Jesus watch the collection plate? We wouldn't feel very comfortable today, would we? If Jesus sat and watched the collection plate. Uh, We really shouldn't be doing that. But yet Jesus was watching the collection plate. And we think about that. And Jesus is still watching the collection plate. And not only is he watching the collection plate, he's watching us every moment of the day. He's watching how we spend our time. He's watching us how we do our work when we're at work or when we're in school. He's watching how we serve other people. He's... He's our bookkeeper, really. He looks at your checkbook. And he knows all your financial statements. And more than that, he looks at our hearts. But as Jesus looks at the collection plate on this day, he sees people putting in all kinds of money. And he says to his disciples, as they watched this poor lady come and put in just two small pennies, we would say today, two small copper coins. And he says to his disciples, she has put in more. She's put in more than all the rest. And he'd say, how can that be? And Jesus said, because she gave all she had. And see, God doesn't need our finances. It all belongs to Him. But what He desires is our hearts. And it says, where our hearts are, there will be our treasure also. We'll give money to things that are important to us. And when we're concerned about the kingdom of God, we give much more generously. You know, I think about Christmas time coming up, and I trust our children, our grandchildren, will be treated very well because we love them and we want to give to them. And we think about people coming to know Jesus. And that should be on our heart, should it not? And so we desire to give. And yet sometimes we have to be put in that position where we have very little before we really have that spirit of thanksgiving when your health is taken from you. And you wonder whether or not you're going to live when you feel God's healing given back, it's then we're very grateful to be here. There's a saying that we should live like we're dying. And we should also give, should we not, like we're dying. Because we're all dying. And none of us are going to take anything with us. My daughter just commented the other day, she said, it's a saying we're all familiar with, there aren't any hearse pulling U-Hauls. And it's true. We can't take anything with us. So let's live generously and give generously. I remember 
Years ago, there was a pastor from Springfield. He was retired. And he would come around preaching. His, his name was Reverend Miller. And he would use some in, illustrations that often stuck with me as a kid. And he told the story of this man who had not lived a very good life. And he dreamed he died and went to hell. And he was in misery in hell. But God came to him and he said, please take me out of hell. And God said to him, if there's one thing you can say that you did good on earth, um, can you think of anything? And the man thought. And he said, I gave um, this poor guy on the street one time a little carrot that I had left. He said, okay. And he took and he extended from heaven a little carrot on a fine string. He said, if you can hold on to that and get out of hell, you can go. And the man woke up and thinking, wow, I wish I had given more carrots. You could get a rope to hold on to. And we know that we do not earn our way out of hell by giving. But we give to show thanksgiving to God for the grace He has shown to us. And we need to have an attitude a bit more like that of our Savior who gave His all for us. See, we were on His heart when He came to this earth. And he's the one who tells us in Luke chapter 6, he says, Give and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over will be poured into your laps. In our garage, we have this trash can. It's about a 35-gallon trash can. And we just throw stuff in it. And it easily fills up. But if you go out there and you shake the bag good, it all kind of goes down. And if you do that a couple times, it holds more. But if you take and stomp it down, you can get quite a bit in there and you can pack it. Just say you had aluminum pop cans too. And you could really pack them in there and get it heavy and you'd fill it up. And you can get much more in there that way than if you just have this fluff. It's kind of comparing... Um, the stick of cotton candy on it. It's all fluff and you put it in your mouth and it melts compared to a 10-pound bag of sugar. And God says, give. And it will be given back to you. It'll become so much more and it isn't just going to be fluff. It'll become something of value more than you can imagine. The question is, do we believe God? Do we believe that if we give our best, God takes notice? God blesses us because we're thankful to Him. It says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And when we give cheerfully, we find joy in living. David Ramsey financial advisor says the best part of having money is giving giving and not letting other people know what you gave and he tells the story of a a lady who couldn't pay her electric bill and a man found out about it and paid her electric bill for a year and she would never know who it was she knew it was somebody from her church. But it's hard to think about bad about anybody in your church from then on because it could have been them. And we have opportunities to give, to give our best in Jesus' name. And yet, and yet, we're not always so smart, are we? Jesus continues in these verses, if you follow your teacher, you're going to be like your teacher. And Jesus gave us His best. But we often hold back, don't we? We think we need this security for ourselves. And not only that, we look across the aisle. We look at that collection plate when it goes to somebody else. Um, are they doing their part? 
Jesus says, don't worry about them. It's not about them. It's about you and me. And we should do our part. Don't concern yourself with what others are giving, but you, you give your best. Too often we get caught up, do we not, in all these little issues of other people's lives, and we fail to see how good God has been to us. And when we fail to see how good God has been to us, we aren't thankful like we should be. And we don't find joy in giving like we should. Billy Graham is said to have said, my greatest fear is that someday I'll face God and He will say, why didn't you do more? If Billy Graham could say that, what about us? See, each of us have been given our lives. We've been given talents. We've been given opportunities to serve others as we serve God. And we should have a spirit of thanksgiving. So often we think of thanks eating or thanks getting rather than thanksgiving. It's an opportunity to give thanks to God, to give our best to Him. There's a song in our hymn books that says, What shall I give Him? Poor as I am. If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. But what shall I give Him? Give Him my heart. And when we give Him our heart, we realize He owns everything we have. And we can't outgive Him. We can become like that poor widow giving our all. In trusting God will take care of us because He will. God gave His all for us. How blessed we are as people to know Him as our Savior. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come unto You in this day. And Lord, we thank You for all the many good things that You have given unto us. We confess, Lord, we often grumble and complain. We grumble and complain about the world we live in. We grumble and complain about our troubles. And we fail to give thanks to You for Your goodness shown to us. Lord, may we remember. May we remember how much You gave through Jesus Christ so that we can have lives worth living. We have an eternity waiting for us full of Your riches. Lord, may we use our time here to be a blessing in your name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now shall we stand and profess what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let's turn in our hymn books to page 786, and we'll sing together, Count Your Blessings.
You may be seated. And this evening we're going to do something a little different. Um, It might make you feel a little uncomfortable, but it's very simple. Sometimes we have people come and we offer prayers and they can say many words. In the spirit of tonight's service, I'd like to pass a mic around and I'd like you to say just one word. Something you're thankful for. Thank you, Lord, for... Yeah, we have all kinds of things, don't we? Things in creation, people, attitudes. Uh, we have an abundance of things to be thankful for. We have thankful for all the attributes of God. And so I'd like to begin this evening, and we'll just pass the mic around. And you say, thank you, Lord, for... Thank you, Lord, for my first grandson and for blessing Gene so that he could bless us and I would have the opportunity to play. (laughs) Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for my friend. Thank you, Lord, for school and sports. Thank you, Lord, for my house. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us each with many talents. Thank you, Lord, for hunting. Thank you, Lord, for this free country that you've given us to live in. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Gary leading our church and for our congregational family. This is going to be different. This morning, I got off the bed. I stood up straight. I took in a deep breath. Nothing fell off. You can't beat anything more blessed than that. (laughs) There are so many people in our world that cannot get off of the bed, let alone stand up. For this, we are truly thankful. Thank you, Lord, for coming to earth as a baby for us. Thank you for my family. Thank you, Father in heaven, for your son, for our forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for this church family. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you gave us in uh, restoring the girls' health. The hard times we've gone through. Thank you, Lord, for healing from surgeries. Thank you, Lord, for the children of the church. I think that is truly a blessing that we have the amount of children we do. So many churches, you know, all they have is elderly people and their churches are dying. But we are truly blessed with the children we have. Thank you, Lord, for my wife and my children. Thank you, Lord, for that opportunity to help others. Thank you for our extended families. Thank you for my family. Thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings that thou hast given out to us. So many ways. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for grace. Thank you for the gift of your love and grace. We thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord, for our health. Thank you, Lord, for our family and friends. Thank you, Lord, for your friends. Uh, Thank you for the community of armor. 
Thank you for my family. Thank you for experience and wisdom. Thank you for a wonderful church that we can come to on every Sunday to worship in. And thank you for my family. And thank you for having we, us having a pastor like Gary to come and lead our worship on a regular basis. Thank you, Lord, for my kitty. Thank you, Lord, for hope, for hope for today and hope for the future. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for listening. Listening to our prayers, hearing our cries, and loving us far more than we deserve. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. And now let's turn again in our hymn books to page 788, and we'll stand and sing, Now Thank We All Our God. For our benediction this evening, we turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 5, where Paul writes, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed not only in my presence, 
but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen. For our closing song, we sing number nine in our hymn books. Glorify thy name.